Hello, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be playing some more Beacon Pines today. I really want to see what's going on here. We left on quite the cliffhanger yesterday when we saw Gran in that hazmat suit. So definitely want to see what's happening there. I still am holding out hope that she's actually like an FBI agent or something like that and not <laughs> a villain. But I guess we'll find out. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Secret lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What time is it? My, so loud. All right, all right, I'm coming. Rollo, what on earth is that? Huh? That ridiculous thing on your head? Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast's clear? Yep. Whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Just a tad. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She's little fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rollo. Drat! It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Grant doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first? No dice. It's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I'm going to take this important thing and hook it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well... She is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyways. I can't reach the latch. Realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Alright, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... Hey, this is my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to stand on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. 
Like, oh hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and hold on one of the teacups. It's pointed forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Oh. Seems like your grand has done some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So, which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe? Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Eh, eh, get out of my way. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. And jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Okay, so she was making like bombs or something. I knew it. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Is he gonna eat it? Huckleberries. He his lips. Hint of brown sugar. And ink? What? Lolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Aha! Lolo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli? A grand gem? A grand gem, Gram? <laughs> it says, last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. Okay, so she was wearing it as a disguise. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh, man. Are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, this can't be good. So more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. Finger through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's my dad? Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Lolo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, oh, I had no idea we were in the presence of a preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. Stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Willby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See, creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Through several more pages. Here! The writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition continues, or condition follows close behind, exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Okay. This whole time spoke softly. What does it say next? The folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? 
There has to be more. Frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Look at I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean? Enough is enough. How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit! Luca slammed the door shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your granite the serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncree has a check mark? The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both with question marks? Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Care has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim! We don't know what any of it means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Mm, what else can I look at? Can I punch this? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty funny. Okay. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it... Carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads right to... The end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Uh, Rollo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on the map has the same symbol as these explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure. A real bummer. Rollo, what's the thing you've been excited for the past month? The festival! Uh, did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival? Not if we stop her. Uh-oh. What was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was what? Oh, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. Oh my god. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. It's terrifying. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they've been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? Hello? A few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. You. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Hmm. Guess it's nothing. Shifted suddenly. Is he gonna jump him? <laughs> yes, come on, Rollo. Don't. It was too late. Rollo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop! Oh my god. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? In the dark corner, they saw something move. Nope, I don't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. 
Wait, did you just kill that person? Lucas scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck. He sighed with relief. You should clobbered him good, Rollo. He's knocked out cold. Then clicked back on the light. Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver? Chapter 7 The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver Oh my god, we're gonna torture Still the man? Unconscious. Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. Uh oh. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, blank cop. I only have chill. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. No, that's not a thing. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I should have got my bell rung. Looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolla just got a little startled. Rolla's here? And Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Haram a good scare. Lex, just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rolo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Miss Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town? An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes? To the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This will all make sense in time. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A past that must be brought to... his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light. He runs off. Wow, he got intimidated by a bunch of kids. Son of a... ...to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. At each other. Play it cool, huh? Not now, back. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some Bad reason, ending. They always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. All right, let's see what we got. We already got all these. Well, the only thing we have left is rumble. Unless I missed some of the badges, but it'd be kind of hard to know. I love all these like hand-drawn things on the left side. They just look so nice. Anyways, let's go back here. 
Where does this take us home? Oh, this is when Beck is walking us home. The sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. That moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch a cold. Luca and Ellie will keep trying to reach your grant on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff's still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Excellent. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Ew, that's gross. Wiped his hand off on a sweater and gave a nervous... It's weird, I know. Down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Okay... flowers judging by the odor they were well past their prime pungent okay so there's a new one Attached card. happy trails from coach walker and all the fairview condors boy you were kidding about poking around huh oh sorry was this from your old school the most recent one yeah some schools gave me going away cards some did flowers when they're really trying to feel good about themselves they do both so you moved a lot? Yeah, that's the thing with having brilliant parents. There's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. It... Can I see outside the window? No. Oh, wow. Rollo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, shucks. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Whoa, superhero land. Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest. That hurt more than expected. Well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rollo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Uh, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but... Sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at... A problem? Took a deep breath, exhaling oh slowly. man, poor kids. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I figured out on my own though. You gotta do something, anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know, something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. 
everyone tells me it's going to be all right. But things are going to change. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this down. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate that I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? <laughs> I just want to be a normal kid. There. Wow, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks, I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. See you enroll at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5 Friendly Feud The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue, the smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. That's good. You know, sometimes you just gotta she scream at the rain and you'll feel better. Dad with anyone. Not even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Oh, are we gonna get in a fight with Rolo? That's gonna be so sad. What's the little bat kid? Hey, Don. Tracking down a lead? You bet. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out, when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last will and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance. There were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Eris had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo. So Eris was forced to take care of him? Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper care so much about some random kid? Rumor has it, old Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. Oh, so he's like the illegitimate illegitimate child of the of the rich guy. Well that sucks. Poor kid. Uh right. I believe we're going to go to Rolo. Oh, the book lady is still here. Do you not have a house? He met his old friend's eyes and was greeted but not with nothing but ice cold anger. Heavens. Oh no, there is going to be a fight. She keeps spoiling the story. Oh god, it's these two. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Uh, not exactly, sir. The storm set a spat up a bit and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided... Yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are, all, we are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future. Yes? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed up? No. That we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy? Uh, of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Yes, sir. We will work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Yikes. That guy is uh, not so nice anymore, huh? Also, I didn't realize until that scene with all the foxes that there were like a bunch of foxes. I thought it was just one guy. Rolo, are you still up there? I'm sorry, Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. 
You're upset. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. Scoffed. The rain held me up. Liar! You weren't even home! What? The storm got bad, and I got worried. So I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house, and you weren't there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... That storm rolled in out of nowhere, and I got stuck after dinner at Beck's house. stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know... While I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was gonna be a surprise. But you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Just like you knocked down our friendship! What does that even mean? Luca became instinctively angry and both boys were now shouting across the distance. A lot of shouting in this chapter. That means you're a bad friend! You don't care about me! Of course I care, you ass! I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you! But I kept my word, because that's what friends do. Oh, wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. You can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad friend. Changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. Maybe Pa is right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your paw's nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well, at least my paw- Ooh, it's still around. Wow, that's a low blow, Rolo. Hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Luca, I... Good night, Rolo. Dang it. Yeah, that was not a good choice, man. through his old stuff not even sure what he was looking for a ball obviously can i kick the ball what 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 a jerk call me a bad friend <laughs> that's funny just walking around kicking the ball Ooh, i'm rollo look at me and my amazing family Eh. Can I? I want to kick the ball like down the stairs. Oh, almost. Oh no! Come on. <laughs> I want to like break something. I'm angry. Come on. All right, well, we're not gonna break anything. If Rollo thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can shove it. Wait, isn't there going to be, like, a bomb going off? I guess I'm never- I'm just never supposed to make new friends. Sad. Luca? Grand cooed gently from the hallway. You slipped straight through breakfast. Luca, are you alright? I'm fine. I just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I've got to run out and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. I bet Rolo's still going to go to the festival. Hmm. He's gonna be miserable. Eh. Can I lie down again? Luca dozed off again. Luca, I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So is your plan just to sit in your room all day? Pretty much. 
Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside, I think it'd do you some good. Noted. Lucas still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. He's avoiding it. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. Okay, I gotta I gotta hit the uh, I remember when I was little once I got in a fight with a friend. I don't even remember what we got in a fight over, but we didn't talk to each other for like I think it was like a year or two. And then uh one day we like ran into each other on the street randomly. And this was like my best friend going growing up, by the way. Um but we ran into each other on the street and uh I don't remember who said what exactly, like who said which lines, but basically one of us was like, hey, uh, so can we go back to being friends? And then the other one was like, yeah, I don't even remember what we were fighting about. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's all that came out of that. But kind of reminds me of what's going on in this game now. Hank Atomic. A complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rolo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. No. For the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca, another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck Modwill. She said you met yesterday. What does she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh, she seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. All right, then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table, in case you want a bite before Without bedtime. realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all, and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source. The source, oh my god. Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Oh God. If it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See, Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Oh my god, he's having some kind of... Tiny buildings, freezing like, and crumbling. Like, I don't know, vision or something. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. Oh no! Is this like the bombs going off? They care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Oh no, I'm the villain! Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. 
He gestured towards his face, and all it got me was this. Lucas staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Oh my god. Dad, if you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? <laughs> yes, seriously. Poor kid is like going some through some crazy trauma. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Mom? No, dear. It's only grand. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rolo fought about doesn't matter. But he... Gran silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But he said stuff about dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Hmm. And what do you mean? What? And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. Grand laying down the wisdom. Now get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't it? Luca gave a reluctant nod. So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that what did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival business to take care of. Oh my god, what is she doing? I'll come find you at the fountain a little later, after lunch. Alright. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Through thick and thin. Flaming chicken coops. Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. You just gotta swallow your pride, man. Taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Hmm. Well, I mean, he's probably not up here, but let's just go look to be sure. Nope. Oh, hello. There you are. Luca. Rolla wanted me to tell you something. What is it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. <sighs> a space a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh Roxy, I don't it's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find Luca him. Looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need a favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. Wait, what was the riddle? Oh, okay. 
a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If you be brave, go so I mean let's just go to the library, right? Come on, Rolo. You gotta you gotta do me a little better than that. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Still can't go that way. Oh. Hello, Joey. How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much as an exuvier. Is that how you say that? <laughs> and it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. Hmm, yeah, maybe it's that toxic plant down the street. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spooked them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Oh god, it's care. Ugh. Unique New York. Unique New York. Huh? Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony speech. Pointed to his grinning mouth. Ugh. Gotta limber up the old gab box. You nervous? Oh, heavens no. We'll break a leg. Give me the gift of the grip of something. I missed it. I want to talk to the clipboard guy. We only ever... Oh, no, there is two of them. There's another one over here. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Care speech and the perennial harvest uh, festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. Uh, can I go to the treehouse? Oh, hello. Did you hear? After Mr. Care gives his big speech, they're going to have the first annual big catch competition. As long as a boot qualifies as a catch, I'm a shoe in Good luck. Let's see if I have any more bait. Oh, I do. I got three. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes sinker. The best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Those are like the heavy ones, right? Like the little metal balls. Oops. Yeah. Reel them in. See what we get. Probably just like a branch, if I had to guess. Oh, it's a bottle with a note. Oh. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard liquor for a hard man. Best leave that be. Takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around. And it looks like it has a note in it, though. It's not like actual whiskey. Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Oh my god, I hate those things. I hate those things because people just like, always smack you with them. It's so obnoxious. Although the way they stick to things is pretty fun. Come on, get in here. I'm a master fisher. You have no chance of escape. Should we give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. <laughs> All right, pungent. A twig of thyme around the hook. Some fish have refined taste. Get some herbs. All right. I think there's only like two fish left, based on the amount of space left on the blanket. Ooh, a watch. Property of Sharper Valentine figures. If he had it his way, property of Shopper Valentine would be written on everything in this town. Should we give it back to him? He may not even want it back. The man's got a contentious relationship with time. We'll keep it here in case he ever wants to pick it up. Uh, I wonder if that's all of them. I think I'm still missing one. I didn't get a Steve achievement, so I assume this, there's a Steve achievement for collecting all of them. Um, nothing else here. Oh, look, that's the jacket that the kid was wearing when he got all disfigured. I just noticed that it's there. Can you go over here? No. I wonder where the uh, the guy lives, the one who trades us junk for snacks. I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they were impressing with this ridiculous festival. Why is Roxy always walking around with a stick in her portrait? Totally. The town's falling apart. The weather's still cruddy. And this season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But the lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fits. I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade, is all. Ain't moving. <laughs> this man 
has principles, alright? And he's gonna stand by them. <laughs> Every single time. Yep. Wait for it. <laughs> Unexplained sound once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. <laughs> that kid's annoying, but he's also kind of funny. Oh, his name's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Everything all right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I mean, used to be fine. Just ain't right these days, you know? I really do, actually. You do, don't you? Jeff gets me. Just, <laughs> just scratching his chin. Jeff gets me. He understands what it's like out there. Alright, thanks, Jeff. Let's do this again. <laughs> Every single time. Yep. Wait for it. Is it just repeats? Unexplained sound, once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of draw. Okay, it just repeats it. Can't go in there yet. I wonder if I'll go in there eventually. Alright, crocodile lady. No, uh, no predictions today. This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the foul harvest. I had my doubts about the perennial harvest, but I must admit they do put on a nice party. I think it's funny that they have the rabbit be the one who has, like, a baby and another baby on the way. Hey, Aluka. How's Griffin doing? What? Oh, nothing. Just pretend I didn't say anything. What? Uh... Is Griffin... Griffin's right here, right? Oh, this is Piper. Piper, you're actually taking a break from studying. I wanted to see what the festival fuss is all about. But I can't help but notice you still brought your backpack full of books. Luca, backpacks can carry a lot more than just books. True, true. So what you got in there? Books. I was able to return the perennial harvest safety, safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now will you tell me what you needed it for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. This isn't going to harm Mr. Care, is it? All you need to know is that it's for the good of the family. Hello, and most welcoming of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. Oh, hello. I always forget her name. Yawn. I've got a question for you. What do you think this whole festival is for? The way I figure it, Perennial Harvest is trying to win the town. Like a bribe, but with balloons. Cynical. I like where your head's at. That's what I assumed at first, too, until I eavesdropped on a couple of gossip clipboards. What if I told you that this whole thing is really a special shindig for a super secret guest of honor? A special guest? Who? I haven't dug that deep yet. But whoever it is, PH thinks they're a big deal. I see. Can we go in here still? Let me in! I want to make more food for people. Was that the right place for that, or was that down here? Luca, did you know that Beacon Pines is actually unincorporated? A lot of people don't know that. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. Why do you, you know that? <laughs> What's that mean? It means most public works are handled internally. We do all the pipelines, the water treatment, building regulations. Uh, that's great. Census taking. Emergency services. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, Luca. So you're done at the library? Huh? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Wait, is this like uh They probably have like a surprise party or something. Or like an apology party. Yeah. Okay. Did 
Do, 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 do. There's the library. But what if I don't go to the library? What if I go to Beck's house instead? Will they even be there? Hello. Nope. I mean, I figured, but worth checking. Jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump. Huh? The library, somewhere quiet. Yes. Are there new books for me to look at? Don't look like it. Hey, Jace. Still working through the newest Hank Atomic? You know it. Some fascinating canon toward the end. Did you know that Hank Atomic Shrink Array doesn't technically shrink stuff? It uses inverse quantum particle to pay to literally grow the entire universe around an object, leaving that object unaltered. Yeah, that makes sense. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else? Bingo. That's wild. But Chase, no spoilers, please. Oh, right, sorry. Dang. Now that's a powerful ray. Hey, Luca. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. I just got a steam achievement. The first... Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Well, it does go all out, doesn't he? Ahem. On planet Farpool, you may take issue... When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right. When you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hint, the offer still stands. On planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Uh, Take issue. The fifth king dies? Uh, is that just a- I think I just need a book, right? I don't want this one, I just want to see what they all are. What am I looking for? Our planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. I need like the fifth issue of something? I mean, all the Hank Atomic comics are up there, right? So it's probably on the second floor. Luca grabbed Natural Photography, Volume Five. Luca grabbed the Modern Science of Atomic Radiation from the. Sh the Modern Science. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number Four. Mm, no. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number Five. There we go. Ah, you found it! Moved his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed: "The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Why is it glowing? Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rollo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that, and only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it, but I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Joff for this purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rolo. Now let's see here. How to begin flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grift. Only found in Grub. Cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in grub cart. Griftin Griffin. Griffin's grub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, brilliant. Why did they give us the answer to this one? Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Gala. That's sweet. He put together a little scavenger hunt to apologize. Alright, let's go to the snack stand. Hey, Griffin. Did Rolo come? Luca could finish his sentence. Griffin handed him a corn dog. 
Oh, that's it? Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Yeah, it's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here for a while. Rollo wanted me to be sure to give you that one specifically. Well, that's just... Oh, come on. A pickup when you need some pep near the fountain up the step. Okay, so that's going to the, uh... <laughs> this is gonna be a whole thing. That's just going to the little store next to the fountain. Come on, Rolo. These are amateur riddles. There you are, Luca. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It's way below my pay grade. This cat creature is obsessed with their job. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. Rolo owes me one. Sarcastically as he began. What takes flight but has no wings? Your final task a friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> it's flexing. Ugh, I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. Your final task a friendship brings. What takes flight but has no wings? Oh, it's their rocket in the uh, treehouse. Ah. <sighs> Oh, hey, Rollo. Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then, I know it doesn't make up for what I said. But here, you've earned this. Flight. Oh, I guess it's not the rocket? It's just the balloons? Nice. You didn't have to go through all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened, with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Oh, hello. Still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant I wasn't good enough, but that was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You can talk now. Threw himself at Rolo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rolo, I don't deserve you. Aww, I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We can snoop around and try to find some info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff with those clipboards right down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. You know, I have been wanting to get some work done on the MCDC at Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. I wonder what I can do with these balloons. Is there someone who likes balloons? Oh, those balloons are bouncing all over the place. I guess I can let Roxy know we're friends again. No, she doesn't want to talk to me. That's fine. Do do do. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. Letter. Some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. Oh no. I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. No! That's not a letter you want to get from someone. Oh my, that's a just, that's not a good letter to get from someone. To his pocket and headed up the ladder. 
what's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. You know, you really didn't have to go through all that trouble just to apologize. I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, that was, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Oh, lol. I was at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. The festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next year. This was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Oh my god, it was a bomb. Can't believe it. Oh, huh? what was that? Oh man, we missed the fireworks? fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Oh no. As old and cruel as time itself. Oh. Uh well, I guess we're dead. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Before what happened? Act, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And what so, the heck is going the on? Story ends on this melancholy scene in a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends alone together for the rest of time. The end. Mm. No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Yeah, that one's pretty unsatisfying. So I can fly it over here. Um... Or I can interrogate the squirrel guy over here. Um, yeah, let's do this. This one's like really different from what's currently going on, so I'll do later. Time to do the good cop, hard cop. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. A hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said... Mr. Tolliver! He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? He wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here, punk. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. The expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. We can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Hitting his stride, with now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall, he slammed the table again. Now dance! What? I don't even... Oliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. Oh, you tied me down. How on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk. Spill the beans. What are you doing poking around this house? I I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran? Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? Good lord! His head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you've got it all wrong. Where is she now? She's headed to the source. 
Source? What's the source? It's where... The town began. It all began. What is Operation Sparkplug? Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Oh, he, he cracked under the pressure. <laughs> Rolo swung around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rolo. I think you went a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we'd better not push Mr. Tolliver any farther. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the History Museum? I just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library. If there's any information about this source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Fast travel. Gotta check in on the latest comic, though. Okay. This is a dang nice library. Thanks, we work hard on it. Aren't you a little too adorable to be a librarian? Uh, Kato hung out here so much, eventually they gave him a set of keys. I just keep an eye on the place for Miss Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet and I get access to all the books I can read. What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? We need a favor. I already told you in Rolo, I can't put you any higher on the waitlist for the next Hank Atomic. If you're here with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're here to do some research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing, we sort of don't know. What do you got on the history of the town? Uh, there's the county record archives. What's in those? Births, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. Mm. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement. But his focus wavered. Explosives. Messages hidden in jam. Dossiers on various town figures. And a corkboard threaded with photos. It does seem very Illuminati. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in town square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are going to pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm going to end up in one of those asinine death records. Rollo Cotiver lived a life at full and wonderful life till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Shut his book with an assertive nod. If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Under his breath. You're a county record. Really? That's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be the footnote in history. Just like... Her down on the open page before glancing down to read. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and... The back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name back? In the obit? Jay Hartford. From the Brookville Tribune eight years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford? That's my grand's name. Juniper Hartford. Maybe there were two Jay Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young- Oh my god, it's not grandma. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your grand is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? Oh my god. She is like a secret agent or something. Alright gang, I gotta close up for the night. How late is it? Almost ten. Oh crap, Pa's gonna kill me. I gotta go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. What are you gonna do about the unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. Just lock him up. The 
if he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves <clears throat> before entering. Oh man, the confrontation. <laughs> the music. Still, tempering his breath and to listen closely. She was asleep. Who is his this imposter? That she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. I mean, I don't think she'd be dozing off in a chair if he did. If she did. All right, Mr. Tolliver. Oh. I guess she did. Oh uh, no. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace. What do I do? Lucas' hungry stomach groaned, not realizing it. He'd gone the entire day without eating. Oh yeah, I skipped all the food that they brought me. I just need a little brain food. A pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. The lid to read the label. Mr. Nuncreed. <laughs> okay, now I can think. So if Grand knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing was wrong. Gran will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. Go to sleep. Uh, this sounds like a not good idea. In fact, I would like to not go to sleep. Can I get some food? No? Okay. The book? Yeah, okay. I always try to read that book because I see it there and then it never ends up being anything. Oh no! Gran? Okay, stick to the plan. Go to bed and play cool. As Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Why don't you spend the night at one of your friend's house, man? Oh no, the jam. Luca groaned and tried to move. His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. The jam. Sweet boy, what did you get yourself into? She's just dragging me. <laughs> Rest now and let me handle everything. Chapter 9 A speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? You Forever. drugged yourself, man. Why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. The festival! I want to go in these doors. Man? No. Oh. Where have you been? I, uh, Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for secret conspirators. Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncreed? Put me to sleep. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Sly devil. I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We looked but haven't fa seen anything odd. Your gran is nowhere to be found. But Mr. Nuncreed is just loafing around waiting for the speech. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone is gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. 
near him is this thing. Uh, hello, Beacon Pines. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and I suppose you already know that. Uh, oh yes, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be where it is without my father, Sharper Valentine. So I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. <laughs> Three people. Even that's more than the old codger deserved. He cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. Right. Where was I? William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Gus Valentine, everyone. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. What a great turnout. Ah, oh, heck, I didn't prepare anything. But I suppose I could say a few words. It would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his oh vest. Oh my god. Community. Conviction. Commitment. Those are the things that we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Change is a powerful thing. It's inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. I'm a dad, and I am dadgum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip, which brought me to a small town, which would change my life forever. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away a single tear. From the second I set foot in Beacon Pines, something about this place has held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. The podium to emphasize each word. Community. Conviction. Commitment. Change. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. And perennial harvest is the community first and foremost. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that is that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. Oh my god, he's just talking and talking. We now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? Just imagine what we can accomplish. Oh. What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry. A uh, little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remain calm. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Through all of my travels, I have learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town, and so it is with a happy heart that I can proclaim Raised his hands up to the heavens. Our harvest awaits. Okay. So what, he wanted to kill everyone? At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end on a stage with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time the end dang there's that ice again whenever i think we're getting close it comes along and ruins everything maybe we should just quit maybe you should just close the books walk away and never think of me again no i i don't mean that we got a little closer this time we just need to try again, please. 
All right, all right. What do we have? Well, we have another one. It's another interrogation. Yeah, well, we might as well keep on this path. Sly cop. Is this the one where Beck runs it? Good cop. Sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind yep. Beryl, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. <laughs> what? What's going on here? You, you're that mode will go. Please call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. Seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here? Caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This was going to be easy. <laughs> you know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. Has she sent a child? What better to, way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes Mr. sense. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. It had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this Mr. town. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to... As if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence? Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out that we're going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. You sure can, you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. This man is not very intelligent. You can leave the rest to me. Good. There is one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing, really. The other day, I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and nowhere to put it? It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs. <laughs> Worst spy on the planet. Although we already knew that when we met him the first time with the jam, so... You guys catch that? Sure did. Whole time Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf, but he all he ever sells us is apples. Blinked slowly. And... The password, Rollo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. A good spy transmission is never what it Beck seems. Marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meeting. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Buried? Covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies? So U would be 21, N would be 14, D would be... Ooh, it's an anagram. Nuncreed's Drugstore. Luke and Beck looked at Rollo with amazement. Rollo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's Nude Rug Store. <laughs> Yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. And we're off. Oh, it's the squirrel lady. You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear, that man would be late to his own funeral. Can we go into her store? Probably not if she's here. I want to give people the rest of the food. Will they stand around with me? Uh, uh, uh. Come on. Do the thing. Oh my god, why is this so hard? 
No, it's just me. Okay. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh? What do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think... I think Mr. Care really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Care and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us no with nothing but problems. Mr. Care came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. That is just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damn backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this is all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change, whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future, or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. Dang. It's getting late, children. He's just throwing shade on his name like that. It's pretty, pretty mean. We better get to know. It's fine. Let's check in with the Oracle, though. Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do something about it. Heh. <laughs> I do hate when the villain makes a good point. Oh, so I can't actually do anything about this right now. I guess I probably need to explore the other path a little bit more. Oh, look, it's uh, Solomon. To the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncreed. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where'd you get that candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. A surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. Though we might not always have family to rely on, licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. But whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot by a person, by their choice of confection. Yeah, I guess. I like sour gobs. I'm certain you do. Oh, uh, wow, okay. I always wondered why Mr. Nunkreed kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold hard cash. He just wants the, the kid just wants his licorice. There's got to be more clues. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, I already know that this phone booth is like a secret entrance, right? Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed? No. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. That is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Kren's new drugstore. I mean, underground secrets. The password. Flung open the door and they all squeezed in. Imagine being an evil organization and having like three eight-year-olds or ten-year-olds or whatever bust Lucas down your knuckles, door and walk into your secret lair. Underground secrets. <laughs> Sounds like that did something. Great. Now what? I guess we... <laughs> from its shell without even the space to panic they closed their eyes held their breath and accepted their fate suddenly the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing it was unclear effortless up, but at least it was solid ground the air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine i knew it you knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth 
Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the transdimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue number 12 were real? Rollo, at one point or another, you've said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. Okay, it looks like each of these has something written on them. Uh, this suit has a broken mask. So have we found our mysterious warehouse creeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. If it walks like an uncreed and talks like an uncreed, let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Can I play with the computer? All right. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Perennial Harvest main office. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. Is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town has all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Paul always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa. You don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Yeah. That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Meeny, meeny, miny. Prolo, what did you do? Nothing! I didn't even mow yet! Oh. What was that? Hide! Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Oh, it's not a creed. Shit. 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 Awesome! You all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers, Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password, but they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before. Toward the strange tubes. All of this. That's a lie! It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality. Complications. Life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hellbent on helping folks. So you were a sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Let out a growl of <laughs> Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us, says he's got an opportunity. He found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was, it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plot line. Walt loved being righteous, almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, is a per if a person says yes to one time to Sharp the Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharp is long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. 
I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this, but you forced my hand. What? You really don't know? My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she? How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what it is she's messing with. I, uh, tell me now. She's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in the town square. The fountain? But why would... She knows about the source? What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. Uh, so is she like, oh, you all need to run. Run where? Away. Run as far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. <laughs> he just jumps up. <laughs> that did not go how I expected. So we're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. Rolo's so brave. He just jumps without even looking. I love this town. Chapter 8 The Cold Hard Truth. Oh my god, is Gran the villain? Is Nun Creed kind of a villain? Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed. Only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped <laughs> fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snapped across her face, and she was flung out. Uh oh, the, the thing went off. Everyone's frozen. Is this our house? Shouldn't our house be here? That was intense? Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in here. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold? Doesn't look like it got on any of us. I didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where did it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We've got to catch up to Numcreed. I think he went this way. Okay, so this is where our house should be, right? But it's not there. And the sounds in this game are so good. Like the little crunching snow sound. And this is supposed to lead to our father's grave. Is this... I'm so confused. What's going on? This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow? No time. Nuncreed's getting away. But what if it says a different town name? Like, what if this is all, like, some kind of government cover-up or something, you know? This is the real Beacon Pines. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. Ah, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncreed is an alien. Rollo, stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into a beacon pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. What if he's right? As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Oh boy. The confrontation. Recognized what Nuncreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been empty. 
emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I don't, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you doom this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. That's not true. Oh my god. This game. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. Oh my god. I need to take the torch. <laughs> so it doesn't kill everyone. your moment now, Luca. He began to weep. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Dang, <laughs> it's too much for him. With warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties lie. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep dark. You doomed us all, Gran. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing Before to... The grand could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Dang, Gran, you doomed us all. to spin around and run to Luca, her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act, unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror, there was no contest, her warm embrace froze in an instant, that is where they remain, fixed in place, forever, and so, our story ends on this melody, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. Dang it, Gran, you've doomed us all. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Okay, uh, so I guess I just need the stuff from the other side. Um, yeah. I think that's a good place to stop for tonight. Uh, that's pretty cool, though. I'm glad we figured out a lot of the secrets. Um, I am curious to see if Mr. Nuncreed is actually, like, uh, just, like, a true villain or if there's, like, some kind of, you know, like, uh, anti-hero thing going on here. But, uh, 
Yeah, Gran is the, clearly not making the right choice. Otherwise, she probably, if she knew what would happen, she obviously would not do that. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.